Adam, it seems like we're in a familiar place. We are. We're in my shop, and mm -hmm. even more familiar, we're circling back to one of the original tested build videos. This was, I think, the second video we shot with you guys, with, with you here, yeah, yeah. on the, the pool table. Yep. Um, and it's your Hellboy Mecha glove. Yes. This so, is. No, go ahead. It's an always want this one, and it's uh, it's a project that's now. Back then, it was going on for a couple of years. Now it's five years. It, and it's an incredibly complex build. For a prop that's in the movie for what, maybe like 35, 50 frames, something like that? No, 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 a little more than that. It's a couple of minute long scene. But Rasputin births Hellboy holding onto this glove, so you get to see it come out of the box, put on his hand, lightning bolts shoot out of it. He opens the portal to the Ogdru Jihad, and Hellboy sneaks through. Exactly. Um, so simple. So simple. I haven't even counted up the number of separate parts in this, but it's well over a thousand separate pieces of hardware and types of materials. There is sewing, cloth work, leather work, padding, blown glass, soldering, brass, machining, knurling, uh, 3D printing, casting, mold making, wiring, electronics, lighting, Glue. I mean, it is every process I've ever used in any model making project, all in one. This time. is it. After this, you're done. You're no, just, you're no, just not at all. Backing away. Nope. Okay. <laughs> not even um, a little bit. I mean, but one of the things that's happened over the last two and a half years is every time we came in here, maybe not every time, but often we would come in and you'd be like, "Hey, look, I figured out how to do the windings on the fingertips," or I, "Look at this, look at this frog yeah. cast I finally found." And and it's been kind of kind of a it's been a, a always in the back of your mind, if yes. not something that you're constantly working on. Well, and it's sort of. With a project this complex, if I was on the clock, I'd be solving the problems perhaps differently. But because it's been open-ended, I do sort of sit and gestate on things that I haven't solved and think about them for sometimes weeks or months before realizing, oh, I can do that really simply this way. I mean, just this central ring spins in the, ooh, whoops, spins in the movie prop, right? Um, well, how do you spin a ring like that? Uh, you could, and I figured this out, probably use these six-inch internal diameter Kadon bearings, which in fact it turns out that Spectral Motion okay. used, um, except that they're $600 a piece. Wow. Yeah, I didn't spend that. Uh, I found a reseller on eBay who had some of these used for about $100 a piece. That's still, I mean, that's not an inexpensive bearing, but it's, it's $600 each. I, I don't even want to think how much money and also time I have sunk into this because uh, you know, I had the glass tubes blown by uh, Adams and Chittenden. They're a mm -hmm. scientific glass company in Berkeley. They do all the scientific glass for Cal. Mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, some parts farmed out, but most of this I had to actually do myself. And I it, did all the leather work, all the sewing, the quilting on this. Can I just show you? Do you hold on, you did the quilting? I did this quilting, and <laughs> there's a reason I had trouble finding someone to do it. Quilting is mind-numbing. So. And, you just you just sew in straight lines it is over so, and over and over yes, again. Yes, but but I have a material here that's that's the right twill, accurate to the prop, but it's a two-way stretch, and that meant that it was bunching in weird ways, and just oh. was it was really 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 difficult, and took hours, and it's really boring. Well, and then you, I mean you did the leather work as well, so this is a, an in progress for a, a, another one that you're yes, working on. Yes. Yeah. Well, so I knew I wanted to make two in the end. Uh, and whenever I want to make two of something, I'll start out by trying to make four because I'm going to ruin parts, I'm going to break things, I'm going to mess things up as I try and solve certain problems. So uh, it's, I found so much less pain doing it that way. Well, it takes away that fear of the first cut if you yeah. know you don't have to get it perfect the first try. Exactly. And it's not that much harder to make two, two or three or four of a part when you're making one. It's the line from Contact? What is that? Oh, yes, you know, it's yeah. only a little more expensive yeah, to make might two. Might as well make two. So, yeah, this is a great example of the leather work where um, I learned when you're doing stitching around the perimeter of leather, it's better to do the stitching first and then cut the leather to the stitching. Oh, now, see, when you say that, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> but, but it probably took a couple of tries to figure that out, Matt, right? you're sitting there on the sewing machine like, Oh, it's wandering away from the line. Da, 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 da. Well, so just sew it and then cut your line to it, and then you look like you're a genius. <laughs> um, so I also had some parts 3D printed by a user on the RPF uh, who goes by the username Joa Trash. He's a friend of mine. We've done a couple projects together. Mm -hmm. He 3D drew um, these parts of what I call the scorpion cage so around that's... the back of the hand here. Um, and uh, he did a beautiful job. So I took his 3D print, cleaned it up, uh, had a friend of mine, Eric, make a mold of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, a friend of mine. I paid him. He's my mold yeah. maker. Uh, and then we had them vacuum metalized. Now, there was a certain point at which I felt like 
well, this is this is my Mecca glove. I'm making two, so this is great for one of them. But I, I want I, I wanted a hero one, so I challenged myself to hand machine this, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy with the results. You describe that as one of the more challenging machining jobs you've ever done. The most challenging. Okay. I've never done anything this complex. The number of steps and having to think backwards through this to get it going. So did you start it on the lathe by turning and cutting the, the, the dome out and then? Well, let me turn on the lights okay. so you can see the internal uh, oh, thing lights. here. Yeah, there we go. Ooh. So this is all 12 volt, uh, what you call grain of wheat bulbs. Okay. Like from model train sets. So there's 18 slices here through this uh, visible uh, uh, slot uh, around the perimeter. So what I had to do is I had to machine the inside first and then put it in the mill into an indexing head and cut the slices oh, and then wow. put it back onto the lathe to lathe the back and cut in until I got to the slices. Wow. Yeah, I know it was like kind so, of, it was amazing. Just like getting the registration right to get it back on the lathe after you've taken it off is... Like the, this is not an easy job. No, 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 yeah. it wasn't. And I mean, in every way, this is this is. You know, they asked an eighty-year-old cellist why he still practices every day, and he said, "Because I think I'm making great progress." <laughs> and it's a beautiful illustration of yeah. You know, I, I've had now twenty years of experience in making things, and this one project radically increased my skill level. Uh, at making things. I hadn't tried machining something this complex, and that's not that complex, but just even managing a project you, like this. Did you do the knurling around the edges? I did, oh, I it's did. so pretty. I know, I, I love knurling. Knurling is that uh, cross-hatching pattern uh, that you find on dials and stuff so you, to give or, you a little Or flashlights, grip. oftentimes, yeah. Yeah, and um, knurling tool, there's nothing complex about it. You think, oh, how do you cut those things? It is literally like these two wheels that you put on the lathe and you press into the aluminum and they, they give it a texture. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, knurled and then machined out the knurling to the to to the specs of the prop. Um, okay, so what else? Yes. What else have we got here? There's a ton. Literally, I don't think we can go into it all. Can we talk about the windings on the top because you, yeah. you were really pleased when you figured that out. So the fingertips uh, are. I was going to machine them, but it just it's a very com another complex piece of machining because. There's lathing and then there's indexing. So I had to make a holder for it to chuck it into my mill to do the machining around the outside and drill the six concentric holes. Um, but then there is this magnet wire, which is basically motor winding wire, mm -hmm. and it's 0 .030, I think. And I had to wind 10 fingers. So I made a holder that chucked into the lathe as well and drilled a pilot hole and then sat there with the lathe on slow, letting it mm, wind up and then had to glue them in and then put on the, uh, the, the blown glass fingertips, these guys here. So next up, you're going to be winding motors and generators? Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, there's also these two mummified frogs on the hand, and I particularly love those. Uh, here is another one. So the frog is one that uh, I actually sculpted this from scratch on Sculpey. Uh, then I made a mold and cast a bunch of them, then painted them. Then I put them inside the glass tube and glued in a plexiglass ring uh, which I then uh, 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 caulked around so it was watertight. Okay. Then I drilled a teeny tiny little hole in the plexiglass and used a syringe to put water in right up to the hole right there. Okay. And then so a there's little, no air bubble. No air. Well, there is an air a bubble. A tiny little one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, epoxy around the ends, just like the way they make a compass. If you mm -hmm. ever look at the back of a water-filled compass, there is a hole in epoxy over the top of it. That's exactly how I did it, and it worked beautifully. I'm really pleased with the water stuff. Um, this part here is a uh, ball that was uh, hand designed by Mike Mignola with like runic signs on it, like the Hellboy mm -hmm. universe. Uh, and the early versions of this in the hand had the ball there, but Guillermo swapped that out for a more the silver liquid that moved and gyrated. Um, was I that practical? I, it was practical. Okay. Yeah, I know. It was crazy. Uh, and in the movie, this turns out to be sort of like the on switch. Uh, I went back to the ball because I really liked it. And uh, here, as you can see, uh, exactly my process. I, uh, I, again, epoxy over the hole. Mm -hmm. So I filled it full of uh, stuff with the syringe. And uh, also, unlike the film, I actually added lights in two places there weren't lights in the film. Okay. Um, this was me making it, I think, a little bit better. Well, sometimes sometimes when people are building a prop for a film, you, I mean, this is yeah. hundreds and hundreds of man oh, hours God, of work. and they were adding features yeah. and just all this incredible stuff in the movie. This opens and closes and there's all this incredible stuff. So, yeah, so I put... It sounded like there was a motor on there, Adam. It, there is a servo on there and this actually can 
can activate. Oh, right, yeah, I've got it a little bit. But yes, there is a motor on there, and it can activate. Okay. <laughs> um, so I put lights behind the ball. Okay. And I put lights inside what's called the demon gauge, uh, and this is uh, this is a gauge in the film that actually points to many of the names of the Lovecraftian monsters, the Ogdru Jihad, uh, and Hellboy is the last one. So, the, so they're, they're like you set it to whichever demon you want to summon? I guess so. Okay. Um, and just like in the film, I actually have a servo back there, so I will, that dial will actually move oh, nice. when I have the microcontroller in this. And uh, 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 a piece de resistance, I will say, um, I made a machine label for it. Nice. Um, it's, uh, it's called Agdur Jahad the Summoner, and I translated this okay. from German. Date of manufacture, serial number, part number, and then I, you know, I wanted to figure out who would build this, right? Well, who in Germany would build this during the war? So I chose the guys who build the Enigma, built the Enigma machine. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, and of course, they're going to put a maker's mark on So where are you going to put the maker's mark on, the, on exactly the glove? I'm not exactly sure. I might put it just... Uh, just out of sight somewhere. Like tuck it in the yeah, inside of the cuff it, or something you know, like that? Yeah, or it might go here. So the the, the mill and mall motivator that Sean built goes there. Maybe this goes under there, you know? Okay. So it's slightly hidden but feels like it belongs there. So we taught, we did a whole video with Sean where you talked about the motivator. Yes. Um, we won't get into that here. But, like, how are you going to control this whole thing? You're going to have this, presumably, so you can wear it around. Well, wear it around is a, is a relative term. It's very, very delicate. Uh, it, it, you can knock chunks off of it because some of it's resin. It's not all made of, out of aluminum. Um, it is going to have a microcontroller, a little Arduino board that will make the lights pulse like this. Okay. A good PWM uh, modulation. Exactly. It'll make the servos activate. There's a servo there. And like I said, there's a servo up here okay. in the scorpion cage. Um, and it will activate sounds. I've actually I bought some OEM speakers from uh, uh, laptops which have a, kind of a nice loud sound response. Not mm -hmm. a lot of bass, but I don't need a ton of bass. I just want this thing to kind of have a low machine hum when it's operating. Uh, and then... Uh, Enterprise engineering sound. Yes, exactly. Okay. Very good. So we're building... My, uh, a friend of mine's helping me build the Arduino control board with the sound effects and everything. And I'm actually going to put holes back behind here so that the sound works. And uh, not many people realize this, but there's no... Um, it's even though it's giant, it's actually your fingers controlling the you, movement it, of the hand. It just your goes up your forearm, goes all the right? way into the hand. That's, yeah, it's fabulous. It, it is. It has turned out. When when you started out on this, it looked like an enormous project. When when we first saw this this glove two years ago, and it was. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, the exterior wiring, the fact that it's all outside the the glove is amazing to me. Yes. Um, because I, I mean, most of that's functional, I assume, right? Uh, no, good. But some of it. I'd say only about a third of it is actually functional, but let's wow. Let's put it on. There. Are you going to make it actually spit lightning and summon demons from beyond, Adam? That's uh, the question. I'm not. No, no demons. No demons will be harmed during the course of this. That's probably best. <laughs> uh, now I can't turn my hand over because the servo arm is missing from there. Uh -oh. But um, can we hold? No, no, it's okay. all right. There you go. This is. Uh, oh. Isn't that pretty? It's fabulous. And of course, we have a ton of stuff about this untested. Um, All the build progress shots. I've been taking shots the whole time. Hundreds con. of pictures. Yeah. Um, if you're at Comic-Con and you're watching this video, I don't know how that would happen, but we're, we're actually going to be showing it on Friday night, so you can see that. Um, and, and uh, I mean, I, I just, I, I'm beyond words at how well this has turned out. I'm, I think I'm it's beside myself. I'm, I, I couldn't be happier. This is the most complex prop I have ever replicated. So what's next after this one, now that this is done? <laughs> Time to finish something else that's been going for 10 years. I don't know. I have several to choose from. Beautiful. Well, uh, of course, we have more on Tested. Uh, talk to you soon. Thank you, as always, Adam. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, Will.